Hi, and welcome to Easy 4x4. Today, we're going to answer one of the most difficult questions that you could possibly imagine in the world of 4x4. And that is, should I buy a, a 4x4 car with low range? Do I need it? What would happen if I didn't buy it? Would I be able to do 4x4? That's the big question that we're going to answer today with me, Simon Trecker. So, here's the big question then. You want to go, you want to buy or keep a car that you have and it doesn't have a low range gearbox. Can you really enjoy your hobby? Can you really enjoy doing green laning or, or off-roading? in a car that doesn't have a low range gearbox. Now, for many people, they probably don't even know what a low range gearbox is. It's just an extra gearbox in your car that has very, that has gears which are very, very low. So what it means is you can go very, very slowly without stalling the engine. Um, to give you an idea, just in case you're in that position or even thinking, do I need a low range gearbox? Um, we're going to give you, we, all of us here, I'm going to give you a, a demonstration. So we're going to drive, first of all, in normal first gear across this field. And then we'll do it, actually, you know, and we'll also go up a hill because we can. And then we're going to do the same thing in first gear, but in uh, with the low range gearbox. OK, so let's start the car and we're going to use a Kia Sorento of the, the very first model, the facelift, though. OK, um, this has low range. It has um, two wheel drive, four wheel drive um, automatic or permanent and four wheel drive with a lockable differential in the middle which we'll look at in another video but right now we're going to do this drive in first gear in normal okay right now it's in two-wheel drive um, we're going to put it in four-wheel drive so I put it lock four-wheel we're going to put it in first gear and then we're just going to drive and we'll have a look at the miles per hour okay Right, so I've actually taken my foot off the accelerator now, so it's just driving on its own. So I really can't drive any slower than this. So what would you say? Is this about five miles an hour? I'm not sure. Approximately, yeah. Oh, five miles an hour, five kilometers an hour, I would say. Um, so we're just going along here, going along some grass. But now what we're going to do is go up the hill. That's quite a steep hill, but not nothing nothing serious so let's go on the uh, gravelly bit over here to make it a bit more interesting now we're going to go down went to the top of the hill and we're going to march him down again now i've taken my foot off Oh, take my foot off the brake and we're going about 20 kilometers an hour there on through some grass so there you have it that, well that wasn't too bad was it that was um, all in first gear normal first gear that you have in any car except in this case um, we had 4x4 with the differential lock the center lock so that gave a little bit of an advantage but, well, in general, that was okay. Well, let's compare it to the experience in low range. How low can you go? Well, in this car, quite low, actually. The, uh, the really, really low range gears. So let's compare it. So, this time, you put your foot on the clutch. 
Oop, we can't see that. Go down to, this has actually got automatic low range, but we're gonna put it in normal, low range, lock. So it's in lock, and it's in four wheel drive low. So let's see what happens this time. First gear, and away we go. I've got my foot off the brake. Now, as you see, this is spectacular because I'm just mo I'm moving and I'm not stalling. The car is practically almost not registering the speed. So imagine if you were going over rocks now or something very, very complicated, um, this would be fantastic, wouldn't it? I mean, the lowest I could go before, as we saw, was about 10 kilometers an hour, which is about six miles an hour. Um, this is this is spectacularly slow. It's unbelievable, isn't it, really? Look at it. Hardly moving, but we're not stalling. So this is, and people say, oh, you've got to get a low range, because if not, you're not really a real four-wheel drive off-roader green laner. And you can see what they mean up to a certain point, can't you? Because if you're going to go over really, really difficult terrain with, um, you know, holes and, uh, you know, rocks, etc., you'd really want this type of control. I'm going to put my foot on the accelerator. If not, we're not even, we're not going to finish this video. So what we're going to do now is go up the difficult part. Actually, you know, this is beginning to strain in first gear. It's asking me for second gear, I think. So we're going to put it in second gear. I'm going to go up here, and again, this is second gear, and it's just not going to stall, is it? Going up here, in second, in second gear. Sorry if you couldn't hear me there. I'm going to even steep at the steepest possible part. And now we're going to go. Going, go, going to go, we're going to go down. So I'm going to put it in first gear. I'll just let it go on its own. So this is first gear, no brakes. More than anything, we saw that with a, with a uh, in first gear, in high or normal, the car goes down okay, no problems. In fact, I didn't brake, but it did actually get a little bit out of control. But this, I'm not braking at all. Um, again, we're practically just doing a couple of miles an hour or a couple of kilometers an hour, and the control is absolute. So I'll just put my foot on the accelerator. Total and absolute control. There we go. I'll bring it to a stop here. Well, what did you think? I think that was a pretty good demonstration, even if I so say so, even if, even if I say so myself. Um, what can I say? The yeah, the feeling, the feeling of control is everything. And I think with control, you have to add the word safety. It was safe, it was under control. Can't really think of any more adjectives now. You ought to maybe leave me a few more in the, in the comments below. Um, what it comes down to in the end, I think, is... Okay, you think, wow, I've... I found a car I really, really like. So you think, okay, I'm going to buy that Subaru Forester or that Dacia Duster. I mean, it's four by four. You can lock the, the you've got center diff lock. Brilliant. I'm going to get it. But one thing you have to take into account is that it doesn't have, I'm going to turn this off now. It doesn't have a low range gearbox. Um, is that going to be a problem for you? We're, uh, in some cars, um, they have a very, very low first gear, um, for example, in the Dacia Duster, and they even recommend that you, 
on uh, on the road that you go in second. You start the car in second gear. We've got light planes overhead, if you can hear that. Anyway, so you think, okay, um, is it going to be enough though? Uh, it, in some cars, uh, you can even lock the first gear in high or in normal. For example, the Jeep Renegade Trailhawk Edition 4x4. That, you're getting near perhaps the the top of the SUV 4x4s without the, the low range here. Another one which is probably the best out of the box is the uh, Land Rover Freelander, uh, which is now the Discovery Sport. Uh, which looks more like a bubble now than a proper 4x4. Uh, it looks more road going than the Freelander did. Um, the Freelander 2 with its terrain response is unbelievable. I've driven it and in fact I've been on 4x4 rain, uh, Land Rover courses, official ones, Land Rover Experience as they're called over here in Spain and they didn't say oh you know what today we're going to give you a 4x4 course but unfortunately we're in a Discovery Sport. Yeah I know sorry about that. We should really be in the, the normal Discovery because it has low range. But no, they didn't. They just said, let's go ahead, let's do it. And we did We did a, an awful lot of stuff in Las Comas, which is the... Does it say Las Comas on there? No, it doesn't. It says 70 years. Well, this was... The cap was from the uh, Land Rover party in Las Comas, which is near 60... I don't know, 60 miles from Barcelona, which has 4x4 four four circuits, um, uh, forest trails, trails, rock crawl, everything, uh, slopes. And it didn't bat an eyelid as we say it, it did everything um, of course we didn't go on the the black trails which are the ones which perhaps would require uh, low range simply because they're just more extreme so what's the cutoff point here it is this is my advice okay on e e four, easy four by four this is what i would say if your main hobby is going to be green laning or off-roading. Um, you're going to want to go on really extreme tracks and trails um, up very mountainous <laughs> trails as well. Um, really off the beaten track, even going through, I don't know, I could choose some tracks here actually, um, which nobody have done, has done before. Or you want to, you know, going to go into competitions, uh, those special circuits where you go up almost vertically, etc. Then I would say that you'd really want to get a car with low range, with a low range gearbox. Um, because if not, in the end, you're going to want it. You're going to start off with a four by four. And then uh, without the low range, and then you're going to want it. So then you'll have a car that you have to sell. And then you, you, you've, you've given yourself a problem. So I'm just going to say, I know, because I've done it before. You know, I've bought motorbikes. Um, I, got, I got a 125. I got, oh, that's not, I now want a 150. Then I got a 250. Then I got a 400. And I went to the 650 instead of buying the 650 immediately. In the end, you always want more. So it's better, you're better off going, say, if this is your hobby, then go out and get the low range. Okay? Just do it. If you have the money, that's another problem because normally these cars with a low range are quite expensive. If you so, if you wanted to go and say, "Oh, I'm going to get a Discovery Sport second hand, for example," um, you say, "Well, yeah, that's that's in my budget, more or less." Um, and then all of a sudden, you think, "No, no, I need to get it with low range." You look at the the normal normal Discovery price is really really expensive, and in some ways, it's probably more than you need. It's bigger than you need um, more expensive than you can afford so then you have to go back through the catalog to older cars um, I was at the um, Las Comas okay here at near Bas the hundred that, that big circuit near um, uh, the land the four by five four by four land near a hundred miles kilometers or 60 I don't know wherever it is near Barcelona um, it's actually this weekend and 
I would say 90% of the cars are more than 10 years old. In fact, I'd say they're probably more than 15 years old. You see all these Patrol, Nissan Patrol GRs, the Monteros, as they're called here in Spain, because the Pajero means uh, wanker in Spanish. They don't call it that here. Um, uh, pardon my French, of course, or my Spanish. Um, and you're going to have to get an older car. Older cars have their own problems. They have that, you know, so these, these older cars, you can afford them. They have low range and they're more 4x4. In another video, we're going to actually see the difference between a real 4x4 and then the SUV 4x4. But right now, just to decide whether you want the low range or you don't, it really, the cutoff point is what you're going to do in the car. If you're just going to be, do it occasionally, down a, down a, an easy track, etc. No problem. In fact, if you see some videos of Freelander twos and Freelander ones and um, even da Dacia Dusters, they can do an awful lot, uh, especially on muddy terrain, in snow, etc. I think the real cutoff point is going up really, really steep slopes or down them, of course, which you might want to do once you get to the top. Um, or kind of rock crawling, going over very, very tough uh, terrain, maybe with, with, with holes or mud ruts, but very deep ruts as well. If that's what you're going to do, then in general, I would say go for the low range, even if it means, you know, getting an older car or if you've got the budget, then you'll be able to buy one, won't you? Um, but if not, then buy the car that you want to buy. You say, okay, I want a Discovery Sport or... Um, I want the Jeep Renegade um, because it has an American design and Italian mechanics. So it's almost perfect, isn't it? The Subaru Forester. Yeah, also I can get that because that's an SUV 4x4. But you know what? Um, I'm not going to need anything more than, than that, you know. So not an awful lot more to say. I can go out now and enjoy my car because it's got low range low range and I think you can see that really if you're going to go up very steep slopes the low range is is really the one you want especially if they're very long prolonged uh, slopes it's just a lot easier and in general it's a lot easier another thing is if you join a 4x4 club a really serious one with real kind of macho guys etc if you don't have low range I don't know if they'll laugh at you with your face or, 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 or whatever in your face sorry but they'll probably talk about you behind your back you know you go you know because they're all there hi how's your low range today yeah i'm just going to put it into low range actually really yeah actually i might keep it in low range the whole time what about you simon what are you going to do yeah i'll probably keep it in you know first first gear the whole time what first gear low range um hey i've just seen someone over here i want to talk to but yeah see you later you're not part of the club you're not part of the club anymore you just you haven't done it you know you, it's like being in a karate club but not being a black belt you know and then you, you kind of hide the belt so they don't know who you are you, you it's like um the acid test you, you you either have so in that type of club you are either one of them you're in or you're out you're 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 us or you're them it's uh, insider or outsider. Who are you? You're the, the SUV, the, the supermarket car, you know, that you shine, shiny with 4x4 four four bits on it. But it's not a real 4x4. Four four. You're not a real man. You're not a real 4x4 four four man. You're the 4x4 four four man that doesn't have low range. If that's going to be a problem for you, and it probably only will if you join one of those clubs, then you should also get low range and get an old Discovery and spend most of your time in a mechanics and spend a couple of thousand every year to keep it on the road. So if you want to look at that type of car, have a look at High Peak Auto or Auto. Um, that's a really nice channel that I like looking at if you want to buy second hand. Um, and you can see cars with low range there. I hope, has it, has it been helpful so far? Has it? Have I helped you? Because um, this is one of the. I'm, I'm, I've actually got the Sorento now. I'm thinking of getting a Freelander 2 and going back to a car without low range. And now I'm beginning to wonder if I'm making the right decision. After. But you know what I'm going to do? I might, I might get the Freelander 2. And if, if I can't do what I really like doing, I'm not an extreme 4x4 person. That's why this channel is called Easy 4x4. I'm not into competition stuff and having 
uh, cars with with wheels that are actually bigger than tractor wheels in some cases and and and, and squash small children without actually anyone realizing it um, but after driving after doing what I've just done it's a very nice sensation it really is I don't know it's difficult isn't it so I hope this has been helpful at the very least um, in some cases I've probably given you a problem now because you were just about to to buy the car and you felt all excited and everything didn't you, you go oh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting my new car and you go, oh, God, now I've got to think about, do I really need a low-range gearbox or not? Well, I've shown you what happens when you've got one. And if you know what you're going to do in the car, then that's the big decision. I'd say out of all the things you're going to do, that's the biggest thing. Am I going to be low-range or not low-range? That's the question. Not to be or not to be. It's low-range or high-range or golf-range. I don't know. So I hope that's been extremely useful because I think I would have wanted to know all these things uh, before wasting an awful lot of money. Um, if you've liked this video, give it the, the thumbs up, okay? It's a few of you are gonna give me the thumbs down anyway. I don't care, I don't live off YouTube, I don't care. Um, subscribe because I'm gonna talk about lots of very interesting things uh, that your wife isn't gonna be interested in and also about wives and things. Um, and what else have you got to do? Yeah, activate or put the uh, the bell on, uh, whatever. And I'll see you very soon for more fascinating, easy 4x4 videos. See you very soon. All right, bye-bye.